we are uh, heading west. We drove five hours yesterday just to get to Boca Chica. Ended up getting there in the dark and uh, sleeping under SpaceX, which was kind of cool, I guess. Uh, and then we went out on the beach, caught sunrise, had some breakfast and coffee on the beach. And we were getting ready to go for a walk and then we got kicked off uh, because SpaceX was doing a test. So instead of just driving up to South Padre Island and uh, going to the resort area, which if you followed us for this long, you know that's not our thing. Um, we like we like places with less people. Um, so we are heading west towards someplace. I don't know. Uh, we just pointed our nose in that direction. We're gonna see where the road takes us. Bye. By the way, we had that beach to ourselves. We did have that beach to ourselves. I but, bet that is very rare. <laughs> yeah. That was so cool. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. cool place. It's a free campsite with showers and uh, toilets, like flushing toilets. There's a community center with a microwave and power uh, so you can charge your devices. Um, it's big. Uh, show them that way. Yeah, a lot of the spots have uh, water spigots right there. Yeah. Like you can see under that tree there's a water spigot. Tables at some of them. There's no limit to the amount of days you can stay here. Which is very strange. Like you can yeah. snowbird here um, all winter if, if you wanted to. It is right next to the Mexican border. It is literally one mile that way to Mexico. Yeah. So I um, kind of freaked Charlie out the other morning. I uh, when I get sick of my hair, like being too long or whatever, like I have to do something about it right away. And it takes a while for me to get to that point. And I'm also a cheapskate, we're budgeting. Um, but I got out of the car the other morning. I hadn't even had, haven't even, hadn't even had coffee yet. And I grabbed a pair of utility scissors and I'll cut my hair. And uh, without a mirror or anything. Um, so that's kind of a perk of curly hair is it's really hard to screw up. So I think I did all right. <laughs> um, but now it's time to dye my hair. I couldn't find my normal color that I do. Um, so I got this stuff. It's very uh, intense deep violet. And I'm going to outdoors dye my hair so cut and color ten dollars I made a little friend that came to camp. No, 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 no. Don't pee on our tent. <laughs> no peeing on tents, no. 
So, yeah, he's cute though, even though he just tried to pee on that. <laughs> oh, that was a close one. Well, the hair dried. Um, I didn't do anything with it, but everything worked. I think I missed one little gray hair here, which is not too bad considering I didn't use a mirror again to dye my hair. And uh, yeah, so that went well. 10 bucks, y'all. After being here a couple hours now, uh, we're kind of like on the outskirts, which is pretty typical for us to do. Um, there's quite a few people camped here, kind of just spread out a little bit. Uh, I've noticed some people have kind of walked down and looked over and stuff, so I don't think there's a lot of high turnover at this place. It seems like it's a lot of people that are here um, longer term. Um, so a guy did come down on a, a really cool electric bike. Really nice guy. He's been coming out here. He snowboards down here. He's done it for like 10 years. Um, however, he's been at the spot for two years total, the last two years he's just stayed. Um, it's such a cool spot, I can see why. I mean, when you have the, you have electricity, you have running water, there's a washing machine, you can, there's nice weather most of the year, so you can just dry your clothes out um, on the spot that they have for it. Um, there's kind of a community little center spot where there's some chairs and a couple of barbecues and a bookshelf that has like supplies people don't want that are given away and books so you can just kind of um i don't know it's kind of like a little community and it seems like a tight-knit community i went up to go use the restroom and um, they were in that community area a few people um, older people, uh, probably retirees, and uh, I chit-chatted with them for a little bit. Pretty cool to have all these amenities here, and we have like, um, oh, I don't have my phone on me, but like I think we have like three or four bars of 4G uh, with Verizon, so that's excellent service out here. Picked up this beautiful papaya somewhere in Texas. Fruit is a little bit cheaper down here. And a little closer to the source. But there's flies everywhere, which is annoying. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Do you guys eat the seeds? I do sometimes. They're a little too much. Mm. That was perfectly right. sure what kind of bug this is. It's a weird one.
Here you go, my hard working man. Thank you, my dear. We're still at Falcon County Park in Texas and this campground is just so nice with all the amenities that we're staying a couple days, um, get some editing done. Seems like we have to stop every few days or so to um, do, so Charlie can do some computer work on editing the videos. He does the majority of the editing work. Um, I help with filming, social media, advertising. Um, basically, he does the hard part. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. I find the more we grow, my level of my workload is going up and up and up. And I, I enjoy that. I like having things to do to keep me busy. Um, but I'm inside Opal today. Uh, I, you probably saw I was able to wash some clothes. I strung up our line and uh, dried them outside of our, our our camp area. Although they do have a really great spot for drying your clothes, I just didn't use that. I just wanted it close to where the van was, and uh, it dried up really quick. Maybe like two hours, that the clothes were dry. So I'm doing some folding, but I wanted to show you how I store my clothes. It's not for everybody, but to me, it's very efficient. And I feel like I brought too many clothes with me, so when, uh, when I can, I think I'm going to offload some clothes so I have less. Um, but all my clothes fit in here. And this is a pillowcase, and yes, it is my pillow. Um, I don't drool when I sleep. Um, I don't sweat a lot when I sleep, so I don't really mind using my pillowcase as or as my clothes holder. Um, I can wash this if I need to. So um, yeah, that happens on occasion. But I wanted to show you how I do this uh, since I'm going to be folding clothes anyways. Um, at the very bottom of my bag is my pants. So. Um, here's pants that need to be folded. Um, I don't worry about wrinkles too much because once you throw something on and start wearing it, the wrinkles just come out. So I just, you know, fold my pants up nice and small, put them at the bottom of this bag, and then, you know, I put my, this one, I have this bag. Uh, this is my socks, underwears, bras, all that good stuff. Shove that in there. My pillow's getting bigger. And these are all my shirts and uh, flannels. And then these are my tank tops. And this is pretty much, since I did do laundry today, this is pretty much all my clothes right here. Everything I wear. Um, yeah, and then goes right here and I can sleep on it. <laughs> Not too bad. And also another thing I wanted to point out while I'm in here, because some of you guys might be interested, is these are the uh, Reflectix uh, window insulation that I made for the van. And um, the sun is super intense today and it's on that side. So we just left these in to keep it cooler in here while I'm, you know, hanging out doing laundry and stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty handy dandy. Also, you know, having the cooler in here, it helps uh, the ice stay cold longer. Um, we're so low on ice right now, but I realized when I was doing laundry that there's a refrigerator in there that we can use and it has a freezer. So we can make ice if we wanted to. And because we're so frugal, we might. Or we'll just grab ice when we leave tomorrow. But yeah. Who doesn't love the smell of hung dry clothes? Like, nothing better than that. All right, I guess I'm just getting all kinds of chores done today, but um, these are mine and Charlie's toiletry bags, and I figured I would show you guys what's in them. Um, I'm organizing today, and uh, 
figured I'd get these bad boys refreshed and let's see what's inside. I am going to start with Charlie's. This is the solid blue one. And let's see here. Okay. So he has a rag. He has a brush for his beard. I do not have a brush, which you guys can probably tell because my hair is crazy all the time. He has this Men Extra Fresh Shampoo. It's Dove, it's a body scrub. And uh, he uses it on his, uh, his shaved head um, to kind of keep his scalp clean. Um, I thought it would be a good idea and it's worked out pretty well for him. Uh, we found the most uh, manly smell we could. It's kind of rubbed off, but um, let's see. Oh, it's crushed macadamia and rice milk. So it's not super girly, but it works well for him. They don't make stuff like this for guys that I've found, unless you guys know. And then, oh, this is uh, something I grabbed from Circus Circus when we stayed there in Vegas and just threw it in Charlie's bag in case he needed it. Um, and then he has his shave kit, which has his razor, his aftershave, uh, his electric razor, his trimmer, beard trimmer, all that jazz. And that's all he has. So, yeah. Now I'll show you what's in mine. Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. This is the, the hemp lavender soap. This stuff you can use for like, so many things. It's like a 18 in one uh, soap. Like, <laughs> uh, I've just always used this stuff. Um, you can brush your teeth, you can do laundry with it, use it, do dishes with it. Like, the list goes on. I won't bore you with it, but that's that. Um, occasionally, I shampoo my hair, yeah. Um, my hair gel, my conditioner, a little hand mirror, which I hardly ever use, um, and a razor. And that's it. And I forgot my face lotion, SPF. And we have, we keep separately, I'll show you where I keep this stuff, but our toothbrushes, our toothpaste, and we have mouthwash and flossers. And that there is where we keep our toothbrushes, toothpaste, and flossers. So I'm sitting here watching him edit through the window, and it must be a pretty silly video, because every once in a while he just giggles or he throws on a big smile. <laughs> There's not much free land to camp here in Texas. Ended up uh, just camping at these picnic areas with no bathrooms, things like that. That last campground was really cool though. That last campground was awesome. Free showers and everything. Yeah. But uh, like somebody said, there's probably nothing like that place for a thousand miles or two thousand miles. Yeah, we got some suggestions though, like um, somebody said to go up to Junction City and that there's a park there that you can stay three days. Um, so that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, we're just going to make some miles today. So we stayed here tonight, or last night, and uh, there is National Guard right there watching us because we're close to the border. And it says it's a fishing access. But it doesn't look like it's been used in a long time. There's picnic tables buried in the bushes. When we wake up in the morning and it's been uh, 
either cold out or humid, we gotta do the squeegee trick so we can see to leave. <laughs> A funny thing happened last night. Border Patrol pulled up in an unmarked white pickup truck and asked us what we were doing there. And I asked them who they were. <laughs> um, they said, we're Border Patrol, we're watching the area. And I said, oh, well, we're just, uh, you know, staying the night here and uh, we'll be heading on in the morning. And they said, okay, we'll relay the information on to uh, the next shift. Well. That morning, the next shift came knocking at our door with M16s at the ready and uh, uh, asked us what we were doing there. <laughs> and I said, didn't your guy tell you that, uh, uh, you know, we were just spending the night and that we were moving on in the morning? And they said, oh, no, nobody passed on the message. I'm like, well, I'm passing on the message. <laughs> And they said, okay, thank you. We're just making sure this area is secure, making sure you're not up to no good. And uh, then they left. So just a little interesting interaction with Border Patrol. Uh, we had a lot of interactions with Border Patrol being close to the border. Uh, it's just something to be expected when you're, um, you're boondocking in a minivan along the Mexican border. <laughs> Wow, this is probably the most beautiful thing we've seen in Texas. This is very gorgeous. It's the Picos River. What's the sign say? It's about the bridge. High canyon walls dominate the last 60 miles of the Pecos River before it enters the Rio Grande. The Southern Pacific Railroad built the first high bridge across the Pecos River in 1891. The first highway bridge to span the river was built one mile downriver from here in 1923, just 50 feet above water. The 1923 bridge was destroyed by floodwaters in 1954. Two temporary low water bridges built nearby in 1954 and 1955 also were destroyed by floodwaters. A new 1,310 foot long bridge was completed here in 1957. At 273 feet above the river, it is the highest highway bridge in Texas. So you, it's a rest area up here, so you can camp. Looks like somebody else camped out. Uh, no bathrooms though. So we found this spot over here that is looking promising for fossils. It's definitely a fossil here. And looks like Charlie found something else. He's getting a close up for you. Yeah, there's definitely uh, some shell fossils in here. Seems that there's a layer right here, here, Right over here. Hmm. We parked up uh, there on the hill. There's a rest stop on the other side where we met some nice, uh, nice van lifers. And uh, I don't think we'll, Opal would make it down this this little area here. So I'm gonna go down here and check this area. And I'll let you know what I find. We found this spot on, uh, I just Googled uh, rock counting locations in Texas and uh, came up with a map and this was on the map. Decided to stop and check it out. Here's where I was going to check. Um, and then I walked over here to this pile and there is shells fossilized shells in this pile here. Like, lots of them. I 
Oh, wow. I didn't even see that. Look at this plate. See all these little like snail fossils in the wall here. Where are these white? This isn't a fossil, but it's a snail shell. They're pretty cool. I just heard a babe come down here. <laughs> so apparently I'm looking in the wrong spot. <laughs> so you can see layer there layer below it just jam-packed full and look at this that is awesome do we need a hammer i don't know if we need a hammer i think we could just do surface finds Oh, it's just like a shelf. Oh, what? Wow. That is so cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that was just sitting right there. Wow. Okay, I'm digging it. Yeah. Oh, Charlie just found this entire plate of fossils. I found this big guy. Charlie's going up to get our hammers from Opal but I just wanted to show you guys that it's not really necessary to have hammers up here. I mean, I'm sure you're seeing them right now. <sighs> They're everywhere. Crazy. I found these, I don't know what they are, but they're similar. So if anybody knows, let us know. This one is crazy awesome. So cool. So there's the spot we just were, or Liz, st Liz still is. I just came over a little more and uh, I wanna show you these guys. It's pretty cool. Just tons and tons of fossils. There, some up even higher. There's a skeleton of a millipede here. dried out and dead. Just to give you the idea of the size of the things that could come out of here, that's just a piece of a really cool clamshell. Cool stuff. You hardly need the geology pick in here. Oh, there's a nice one.
That's a nice little plate, nice and thin. Beautiful. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. We found some really cool like matrix pieces, like that one. Oh yeah, you guys have seen them. Yeah. I just can't stop looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is on uh, Interstate 90 in Texas. Uh, near the Pecos River Bridge, past Comstock, east of Comstock on the Pecos River. Yeah. The east side of the river on the north side of the, uh, the road. Yeah, yeah. Very cool stuff. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That was fun. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next adventure.